Snow Tracks is sponsored by Ski Doo, Yamaha revs your heart, and by FXR Racing World Class Outerwear. Over the past few years, we've worked with Polaris and Chris Barant on multiple ride giveaways. Typically, it's one rider given the ride of their life with one-on-one -on -one instruction from Chris Barant. But every season has been just one rider. And so we had the RMK King Challenge, where a group of 12 would be selected to ride brand new 2014 Pro RMKs in the mountains of Colorado with Chris Barant. With all 12 winners on site and extremely excited to be here, we are expecting two days of absolute epic riding and probably our fair share of getting stuck. With this number of riders, we utilized all of Chris's fleet of 2014s and his convoy of trucks and trailers to get us to the trail head. Excitement was at an all-time high, the riders were amped, and the snow was falling. Altitude at the trail head was 9,000 feet, and where we'd be riding both days was between 11.5 and 11.8. These winners would be going home very tired. Well, the goal was to bring every snowmobile I have, and uh, hopefully I have enough, and it's gonna be a chaotic, fun day. For both days, we'd be splitting up the groups to make riding more manageable. Six of the more advanced riders would be with Chris on day one while the other six would ride with Chris's right-hand man, Saiyan Skinner, then vice versa for day two. The two big things today, fun and safety, okay? Those two things in a, in a day make for an awesome day. The folks that are riding with Saiyan today, you guys, I want you to really focus on working on the fundamentals of mountain riding and getting used to the snowmobiles. That's what today is for, okay? The guys who are riding with me, you're screwed. Okay. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, but uh, I do, I do get you for one day. We're gonna cover a lot of stuff today. We can't wave our magic wand and make you better riders. We can give you and teach you the fundamentals and what you need to know. It's going to be your job from here on out to practice the technique, and um, of course, we'll have you doing it on a pro RMK in the future, hopefully. After a quick six mile trail ride up to the ride destination, I could tell that the winners were anxious but also a little cautious to ride. Chris was able to give real solid direction to these people and show them where they were doing their riding wrong. Most of them were trying to muscle the sled around and use their upper body strength to put the snowmobile where they wanted it, or riding without the wrong foot forwards and not using their total body leverage to push the sled where they needed it. You're gonna go down in my trench, you're gonna be forward, you're gonna stop with your left key down in the trench, okay? And then you're going to do, you're gonna do the plant following the trench, looking ahead, foot back, up you go. I tried it! That was amazing. The powder was truly deep and everyone was having a great time. But we all had some issues getting stuck. We were enjoying every second of the ride and all of the moments Chris would take to show us why he is so well known. This guy can shred the powder and seems to never get stuck. It seemed like every time I turned around, he was jumping off something, throwing down hopovers, or carving a side hill line that left us all wondering, how could he do that and make that sled stick, turn, and climb? At 12,000 feet, it doesn't take very long for your body to become extremely tired, and with 40% less oxygen, we headed for a treed out section where we could sit down, have some food and water, and talk about how the 2014 Pro RMKs were handling. 
we're out here on the snow with Chris Barant, brand new 2014 Polaris's. What's the number one thing that stands out to you um, on these sleds when you're out in the mountains, out in the trees, out in the deep powder? What's, what's in your head going wow on these sleds? The ratio of power to weight to be able to handle this machine, I mean, it's just great. It's just a good package. It's not throwing me around unless I'm letting it, but it's very nimble. I can take it where I want, point it where I want as long as I'm looking, it's going. You were talking about how the sled gets up on top of the snow better than your M8 does, your 11 M8. And do you, do you notice, I mean, it's, it's in the design of the snowmobile, but part of that design is that it's over 40 pounds lighter than what you're currently riding. Is that, is that noticeable more than just it popping up on top of the snow? Are you feeling it in your arms and your body? I mean, we're riding in some pretty extreme conditions, but. I'm over, overriding it for sure. It's, it's way quicker to react. So everything I do, so I'm not sure if it's the weight that I'm feeling, but, or just the body type but I'm certainly overriding it. The cool thing is, is I could ride this better on my M8 because I know how to ride it, but the potential for this is, is huge because of how quick it is. So once I get onto this, you know, I'm sold that, yeah, I, you know, it'll take me to a new, new level for sure. I'm a big believer in reliability, and so uh, I held off on the 13 as far as purchasing it. <clears throat> and I've always read chain cases, and. Uh, Riding the, the quick drive today, um, I'm actually sold. I mean, it's it's an unbelievable system and I'm glad you put me on it. While day one energy had seemed high, day two was even better. The sun was out, the storm had broke, and the riders were pumped and ready to go, especially the less experienced ones who for day two would get to ride with Chris. I'm a little worn out, but still the, the opportunity to ride with a rider the caliber of Chris Barant is, it's exciting. This is like a dream come true for me, really, and with the blue sky today, I'm just, how does it get any better than that? With excellent light came very easy to read sight lines, and for the less experienced riders made for the perfect day. In fact, with the temperature hovering just below the freezing point and the sky without a cloud, it was one of the best ride days I've had in the mountains in a long time. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go wrong foot forward, and your line where you're gonna be looking is just right up there. There you go. Chris took the opportunity to really push a few of the riders of this group and put them out of their comfort zones in a make or potentially break side hill situation. It was cool to see just how much people learn when forced into a difficult spot. You were so close, like right here, when you came around, your ski was just a little too high and it started you getting messed up. Exactly. With all of the teaching and excitement that was going on, we wanted to make sure that for day two, we still took the time to watch Chris because he's impressive to watch ride and impress us, he did. One of the most famous moves that Chris does, and what I believe is his signature, is the hop over, where he shreds up the face, hits a cornice or lip or wall, and actually lets go of the sled with both feet for a moment when it's rotating from one side to the other. It's very cool to see in a photo, even better on film, but in real life, you get the total picture. It's incredibly cool to watch, but you understand just how hard it is to pull off. Similar to day one, we took the opportunity to talk to the contest winners. And on day two, instead of doing a group session, we took each person aside individually and asked them what they thought of the 2014 Pro RMK. Keep in mind, these are not all Polaris riders. The 2014 RMK, it was really easy to turn over. Um, I've always tried counter steering on the sled that I ride, and I felt like it was just easier to pull over and get on its side and really control. I'm loving how the sled reacts in technical terrain, and then that's it. You, uh, you can slow your pace down, then get the great side hills, and the sled works awesome for sure. 
it's almost a different style, I would say, and a more effortless style. On my skidoo, I'm always thinking about it and kind of making minor adjustments here and there. On this RMK, it kind of, it tracks, and you know that it's gonna stay exactly where you put it. I ride with guys that run Skidoo, I ride with guys that run Articat. As I've ridden theirs, you know, they, they just sort of want to stay planted with the Pro RMK. It was, it was just easy. You just look, a little bit of counter steer, a little bit of weight exchange, and then all of a sudden it just sort of goes where, where you want it to go. How'd I thought do? I was a snowmobiler all these years. <laughs> Turns out this is my first day. <laughs> Did it! How, how was it today? That was awesome! Good improvement. That was awesome. <laughs> awesome. Got to use the stuff we learned yesterday. Oh. Thank you. Good job. To say that this contest was a success would be a total understatement. The 12 winners got to tear it up at high altitude with Chris Barant for two straight days and ride on brand new 2014 Pro RMKs. How can it possibly get better than this? They're a rarely seen specimen. They can be found deep in the backcountry, playing in endless powder and soaring off impossible drops, in places reserved only for the bold and ones that can only be reached with the most impressive equipment. This is where Skidoo's Summit Freeride is at home. Its long list of backcountry specific features make it the perfect sled for those who aren't afraid to try anything and have the desire to go anywhere they want. So what makes the free ride so impressive and what sets it apart from your average everyday summit? First and foremost, this sled is hard to miss no matter where it's hiding. This season, Skidoo has coated the entire free ride line, including the skis and slide rails, with what is quite possibly the loudest lime green, white and gray color scheme ever applied to a snowmobile. At first, its look was shocking and I'm not gonna lie, I didn't love it. But then I spent some more time with this sled and I saw it on the snow and I came to appreciate its bold appearance. This isn't a sled for the faint of heart, so why should it look like one? Under the hood you'll find Skidoo's ultra smooth and incredibly potent direct injected 800 E-Tech mill. We've always been impressed with this motor and trail sleds at sea level and have been no less impressed with it in the XM chassis at 10,000 feet. E-Tech is the perfect fuel management system for a sled that's designed to be run at such a wide variety of altitudes because it's so precise. The fact that it starts and runs so smoothly and is so easy on gas, those things are just bonuses. Up front, the Freeride has a two inch wider ski stance than the Summit models. It also includes a quick disconnect sway bar, which means getting to the sweetest and most remote backcountry locations isn't an exercise in terrible handling. With three different track lengths to choose from, there really is a free ride for every situation. The 137 version comes with a 2.25 inch paddle wrapped around Skidoo's more trail friendly R motion skid. The 146 and 154 models come with a 2.5 inch paddle wrapped around Skidoo's revolutionary T motion skid frame. T motion may just be the biggest thing to happen to backcountry and mountain riding since the introduction of the long track. Its pivoting rear arm allows the rails of the skid to rock a few degrees to each side, and its specially designed track has accordiated outer edges that flex when the sled is leaned over. The combination of these two features results in a sled that can easily be pulled on its side with one hand on flat ground, and requires nearly no effort to pull it on its side in deep powder or hold a line on a steep side hill. The traction afforded by 154 inches of 2.5 inch paddle is literally mind boggling. Gaining forward momentum is not an issue in any type of snow depth or condition. Just ask the people in China. Skidoo has taken a less than orthodox approach to rider ergonomics with their new XMRS bodywork on the high altitude models. Logic would suggest moving the weight of the rider back on the chassis would help get the nose to climb in deep snow. But Skidoo has actually designed the bodywork around the rider footwells to allow for an even farther forward riding position than on previous Summit and Freeride models. Being positioned this far forward on a mountain sled doesn't initially feel intuitive, but once you give it a chance, it's actually quite impressive. Holding a line in deep powder has never been easier, and the amount of leverage you get over the chassis while standing is the best in the industry. A set of KYB Pro 40 shocks with 40 millimeter shock shafts are capable of soaking up even the most ridiculous landings 
and are easily and completely adjustable with the use of toolless clicker knobs. The cockpit of the XMRS based Freeride is literally a work of art. Switches are on the console, so they're off the bars and out of the way. A tall handlebar riser and handlebar package combined with a laid flat gauge makes stand up riding easier and the short mountain specific seat makes swinging your legs from running board to running board effortless. Whether or not you plan to push the free ride to its full potential doesn't change the fact that this is one capable mountain sled that's as comfortable hitting huge kickers as it is picking through the trees. If you're in the market for a new backcountry or mountain sled, there's only one question you need to ask yourself. Are you sure you have the attitude and confidence it requires to ride a sled this unashamed of its extreme capabilities? People expect impressive talent from a free ride pilot. So you better make sure you don't disappoint them. The Polaris Indy in all its many forms was built and sold for more than 20 years. The success of the Indy is unparalleled in the snowmobile industry and quite possibly in the entire power sports world. The name invoked respect because Indy meant suspension, handling, reliability, and class leading performance. Polaris has to be very careful how they leverage the enormous equity, respect, and charisma of the Indy handle. Obviously, the name commands attention and respect. However, what kind of feeling will you get when you check out the new Indy line and take one for a spin? If buyers think Indy means cheap, Polaris just blew 20 years of hard work making Indy mean all the good stuff it currently does. If when you look at the new Indies you see value, well, that's a whole nother deal. It's reasonable to ask, where did the new Indy come from? It's an intriguing story and one which we uncovered a couple years ago when we produced the history of the ProRide Rush. Here's where the new Indy came from. When Polaris began development of a new sled platform back in the middle 00s, they launched two projects in tandem. One was codenamed Blackjack and ultimately became the ProRide Rush. The other platform was the sled we're talking about, the reinvented Indy. The reason the company developed two new sleds at the same time was directly tied to the potential risk associated with the ProRide's radical external shock rear suspension. Polaris hedged their bets and ensured they wouldn't get painted into a corner if the ProRide Rush didn't meet their expectations before going to production. As it turns out, the ProRide suspension not only met their expectations, but exceeded them, and the rest is now history. It's model year 2013, and Polaris decides they want to reinvigorate the marketplace with a sexy, high-value snowmobile which delivers outstanding performance for a very attractive MSRP. The Rush ProRide platform was simply too costly to spawn a segment-breaking, high-performance, value-priced snowmobile. With the Indy platform essentially a Rush front clip with an IQ tunnel and rear skid, fully developed and ready for production, Snowmobile Division boss Mike Jonicus and Lieutenant Chris Wolf called up the Indy and slid a Clean Fire 600 under its hood for model year 2013. And guess what? It worked. The Indy 600 sold well. Buyers were seemingly hypnotized by Indy cachet and the sled's lightweight feel, a full 15 pounds lighter than the Rush 600 Pro Ride, and the sled's crazy top end speed, characterized by the legendary Indy finger walk past the C-note. If power is good, then more power should be gooder, right? Polaris inserted their 150 plus horsepower Clean Fire Liberty 800cc twin in the Indy chassis for model year 2014 and Kapow scored another home run. The new Indy 800's MSRP sticks out like a sore thumb among the competition's 800 class offerings. The value contained in this high performance package is outstanding. So much so, we're convinced potential buyers need only pull the trigger once on this bullet and their wallets will fall right out of their Wrangler. As a result of a recent development in the power sports industry, specifically the introduction of the ridiculously low priced Sea-Doo Spark personal watercraft a question looms large in our sport. We've heard from many of our readers and viewers wanting to know if Skidoo is prepared to do a low cost spark snowmobile. The power sports industry suffered heavily at the hands of the economic recession and according to insiders, the entire industry 
has only returned to about 65% of its pre-2008 sales volume. However, there appears to be a common denominator required to reignite potential power sports buyers, price. As the economy recovers, value conscious buyers are coming back into the snowmobile, watercraft, marine, motorcycle and ATV and side-by-side -side markets. Polaris may have beaten Skidoo at this game with the high value, high performance Indy 600 and 800. The Indy name will endure because this is a really good snowmobile. The question remains though for Polaris and the other snowmobile OEMs. Is the Indy value equation strong enough to attract former buyers and new buyers? We're betting Polaris made the right move with the reinvented Indy. Snowtracks has been sponsored by Polaris Terrain Domination. Arctic Cat, share our passion. And by Go Ride Ontario, yours to discover.